With five rounds remaining in the 2023 Formula E season, the title fight is heating up. While most drivers are still mathematically in contention, today we'll highlight the four favourites for the crown. Now, currently at the top of the championship is Porsche's star driver, Pascal Wehrlein, who's leading with 134 points. With three straight top two finishes to start the season, including a sweep in Daria, Wehrlein's fast start cemented himself as the favourite for the Formula E title this season. However, some bumps in the middle part of the season, including a costly race-ending mistake on the opening lap of the Cape Town race, allowed his rivals to quickly gain ground on the massive lead he built at the start. Despite that setback, a strong showing in Jakarta put him back at the top of the leaderboard and positioned him nicely going into the final five rounds. Now, moving on to our next contender, second in the championship is Jake Dennis, the star leading Porsche-powered Andretti seemingly one-man show this year. Similar to Wehrlein, Jake started the season strongly with three straight top two finishes to start the season. However, he was plagued by issues afterwards and endured a run of four straight races outside the point, almost entirely for reasons outside his control. Nevertheless, his Maldonado S manoeuvre on Da Costa for fifth place at the Berlin round could prove costly for his championship hopes. Following that potentially championship-defining race, Dennis's fortune completely flipped on its head as a strong run of four straight podiums has brought him back straight into contention and he's currently on a solitary point behind Wehrlein. Six points back and third in the championship is Nick Cassidy, one of two Kiwis on this year's Formula E grid, driving for the Jaguar-powered Envision team. Cassidy's greatest strength in the 2023 Formula E season has been his consistency, although unfortunately for him, that reputation took a bit of a beating at the most recent races in Jakarta. Nonetheless, bagging five podiums, including two wins, while only having two pointless races, has set Cassidy up for a real shot at Formula E glory in 2023. Moving on to our final contender, fourth in the championship, and with a considerable deficit, is Formula E's other resident Kiwi, Mitch Evans, the Jaguar ace. Sitting on only 109 points, Evan has been one of the best performing drivers in Formula E in 2023. However, the points gap alone is not representative of how well Evans has performed. When your teammate has been your worst enemy this year, crashing you out of two races, then you know that the dice haven't rolled in your favour this year. Nonetheless, with two wins and four podiums through 11 races, Evans' talent has allowed him to keep his championship hopes alive. Next, let's take a look at races coming up as we wrap up Season 9 of Formula E. Of the three remaining tracks on this year's calendar, Rome and London are both known entities where we can use past results to give us some insights about who may have a slight advantage at these tracks. Mitch Evans has won three times at the Circuito Cittadino del Llor in Rome's financial district, so he and his Jaguar will be one to watch when we hit the streets of the Italian capital in mid-July. Likewise, Jake Dennis has plenty of good history at the XL London circuit on the shores of the River Thames. Dennis has won two of the four races at the highly technical indoor-outdoor circuit, which should mark him as one of the favourites as Formula E descends on London to close out the season. The third remaining track on the calendar, Portland International Raceway, is of course brand new for Formula E. Unlike most Formula E tracks, the track is a purpose-built racetrack, which will bring its own characteristics and challenges. Of course, Formula E raced at two purpose-built racetracks during the COVID-affected Season 7, the Ricardo Tormo circuit in Valencia, Spain, and the Autodromo Miguel E. Abed in Puebla, Mexico. Of our championship challenges, Dennis has a win and Cassidy has one podium from these venues. Of course, we should mention that unfortunately for Wehrlein, he finished first on the road at the first race at Puebla, but was disqualified for a technical infringement. We think that these four drivers are the ones who have the best chance of capturing title glory this season. And while drivers such as John Eric Byrne and Antonio Felix da Costa, among others, still have a mathematical chance, their odds of claiming the Formula E championship are slim at best. We believe that between Porsche and Jaguar, the powertrain that is able to deliver most consistently across the remaining three tracks will have an excellent chance of winning. With two drivers driving each powertrain, one for the works team and one for the customer team, this will be an extremely intriguing dynamic to this year's title fight. However, we think Dennis is the championship favourite. He's been on a great run of form, doesn't have to worry about competition from his teammate and has some good history at one of the tracks left on this year's calendar. That being said, to conclude, 
The driver who is able to deliver consistent high points finishes will be in the driver's seat to finish first in the championship in the opening year of the Gen 3 era.